What's going on, Crappie Ed family? It's your boy, D. Crappie. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you stopping by. We do fishing stuff around here. I had a couple of Crappie Ed mem uh, family members ask me to do a video on how to set up a fishing rod from start to finish. That's what the day's gonna be about. I wanna highlight the new merch. I got a charcoal gray dry fish shirt, new revised logo on the chest. I got the, the, the hat to go with it to match. I had to turn it around because uh, Lighter cast a shadow on my face, you won't even be able to see me at all. We're gonna start out with a six, six foot rod. And I wanna give you a little advice on when you buy a crappie rod. If you can, at all possible, buy the lightest rod you can, you can get. I mean, whatever action you prefer, whether it be light action, ultra light, medium, moderate, heavy, whatever, that, that's, that's your personal preference. But try to get that rod as light as you can because Jigging for an entire day or however long you jig, you don't want to get fatigue in your arm and your wrist. You want to try to cut that down as much as you can. And so we're going to do the 6-6 six, six today. And I won't tell you what the names of this stuff is, the rods and reels I have, because you cannot buy this stuff anymore. That's why I just said the, the length. So uh, desirable length to start out with is a 6-6 six, six or a 7-footer. That's another good thing. And then the reel, this reel is a 1500 series. And the only reason I bought this reel because Daiwa did not make a 1000 series at that time. But they now they have out an Exceller reel that is a 1000 series raw, uh, reel. And it's wonderful, magnificent reel, very magnificent. And as, as of the time of this video, it is $59 at Bass Pro Shop. So see if you can get one of those right there. And so we'll be using this plain old line spooling box to help out with the management of the line to keep it all straight and so let's just start out with putting the, the actual uh, reel on the rod and this is what you'll have to do if you don't buy a combo rod setup the combo would already be already be on there together for you so I'm actually moving before I'm talking. So you slide the rod, the rod seat. This, this is called a rod seat right here. This is where the reel goes into. You push that up in there, hold your thumb down at the bottom, keep it in place, and just screw it down tight. You wanna screw it down as tight as you can without breaking it. You don't wanna break that bad boy, but you definitely want it in there tight. So you go catching some big slab crappie, you'll be good to go. And so next, we'll do the line and we'll we'll talk about setting up your drag as well in this video so off the bat you have to put the line on the spool of the reel you want to use the line from the bottom of the spool this is coming off the top the line you'll see it coming off the top you flip it around it'll come off the bottom it'll help with the line twist in your uh, reel it'll help cut it down and another thing, you will have a little bit of line twist because the diameter of this spool is bigger than the spool on your reel. So you can't match the, the width of this loop coming off of here. So you'll have a little bit of line twist, but as the line stays on this reel, it'll, it'll conform to it because monofilament is what we're using today. This is four pound test monofilament and it, it'll conform to the uh, reel spool over time because it, uh, it has memory. The monofilament has memory. It'll remember how it used to be at a certain point of time and whatever it was conformed to. So we'll just feed this through the little holes. All right, got that in there. Close that down. Make sure it's fastened in there pretty tight. And then we're gonna tie an overhand knot. But I, since this line is so little, and it's probably gonna be hard to see what an overhand knot looks like, and this is for those who don't know how, how, what, how to do an overhand knot. I'm gonna send y'all to the other D crappie and let him show y'all with some paracord. Gonna tie an overhand knot today, gonna tie an overhand knot today. <laughs> All right, boys and girls. D crappie sent me over to show y'all how to tie overhand knot. And then what you do with this dude hickey and hickey is you pull a, a line through the line through the eye right there, okay? And you just, Twirl it around the back, pull it through, pull it down. That's the first one, and then you do that again. Pull it down, tighten it up. That second one makes that knot strong, 
stronger than polygrip on some old folks dentures okay that's how you do a simple open hand knot now we're going to take it back on over to d crappie let them show you how to finish this video up because we've tied a overhand knot overhand knot huh. all right thank you very much d crappie that dude right there he's something else he's something else all right after you have your overhand knot tied you take your little clippers i don't want to get in view and you cut the little tag in a little extra line cut that off flip your bail and you're gonna you're gonna run your line through the first eye guide on the on the rod the first guide on the rod you're gonna run your line through there and then we'll turn the little box set it straight towards us pointing towards us and then you'll just reel it on in spool it up you can spool that bad boy as fast as you want to or as slow as you want to but you'll see the line going there evenly and just spool that bad boy up until it gets to a point where it fills up and a, a lot of the spools will have uh, line guides right there and you can you can run it to either one of those lines to your preference to fill it up but I, I would prefer you not to go past this last line so fill it to that point right there and then you'll be good to go and this is about as much line I'm gonna do on this reel for this uh, demonstration because I'm not gonna actually use this line on here but all right, so we'll we'll run it there, right there. Then we'll pull out some extra line because we have to run it through all the guides on the rod. Run out an extra line, clip that, and then from this point, you'll just thread. Let's go down here. You'll just thread the line through each one of these guides, and make sure you pay attention. I always like to pull on it to make sure I have the guide connected because sometimes you can think you went through the guide and you really didn't and so I always do a little pull to make sure because it's nothing like getting out on the water and you get ready to fish and you don't have it through all these guides and then you got to redo it trust me I've done it too many times more times than I want to know and I've been fishing for a long time so keep running these through all the guides these little guides I got a little micro guides on here and they bad boys hard to see all right we got the line all through the guides now and now you're gonna get ready to do the fun part you're gonna tie your jig head on all right so we have a 1 8 ounce jig head right here and I'm gonna show y'all one of the, my favorite knots to tie on this jig head but you know what since this line is so light and maybe hard for some of you guys to see. We're gonna take it on back over to the other D to show y'all how to tie a loop knot, okay? I'm gonna show you how to tie a loop knot. I'm gonna show you how to tie a loop knot. <coughs> All right, boys and girls, today, D Crappie wants me to show y'all how to tie a loop knot, one of his favorite knots, the town of Crappie Jig. Okay, so we're gonna, this is gonna be your jig eye right here where you stick the line through. You stick that line through there like that and you'll double double it over <clears throat> gotta excuse my english you double it over then you take your two fingers wrap that make you a little circle around that those fingers right there because you need two so you can stretch it open like that then you, after you have it stretched open you got the tag line and, and the main line in your hand you take the, the line with the jig head and just drop it back through the loop let me get some more, let me get some more stretch out here. Make my little circle there. Take the jig head. It don't want to cooperate. Drop it through the loop. Drop it through once. Drop it through twice. On your regular fishing line, you'll do that three times. Since this is paracord, it's a little thicker. So we're gonna do it like that for this, this demonstration. And after you have your loop ready, I suggest you tie that loop tight close to the jig, high, jig eye. So you just pull your knot down some like this there. Pull it down, slide that thing down that line. Pull it down tight because the closer you have that knot to the jig head, when you get hung in some brush, you'll be able to push that jig down a little bit more. If you got a bigger loop, it'll just slide through there real easy. So slide that knot down as close as you can to that jig head and you'll be in the money. Okay, and I'm gonna send y'all over there back to 
deep crappie because I taught you how to tie. A loop knot. <laughs> Man, that other deep crappie, he's crazy. I hope we're not paying him. All right, when you got your jig tied up, you'll have a tag in, which is the end that you're going to get rid of. You just clip that as close as you can to the knot. Then you have a pretty little knot right there. And so next, we'll put the jig on the jig head. And so this is a custom bait. I, I like using custom baits to get a uh, fish a little something different than they've seen before. All the generic stuff in the grocery store that you can find. But what you want to do is squeeze the jig between your fingers like this. And you want to come down the middle of the jig. You want to come dead center of the jig. And you're going to actually do this like you would do like a worm on a hook. So you'll take it, you keep your fingers on the, on the jig, bend it around the hook, just work it down the hook, keeping it straight in the middle. And then you'll push it up on the, on the neck, the collar of the jig. And then voila, you got your straight jig on the hook right there. And what the loop knot does is when the, when the bait is in the water, it allows it to move more freely. It's, it gives it freedom to move around and so it's not restricted by a tight uh clinch knot on the on the uh, eye of the jig head right there it's not restricted by movement and it, it'll it'll move in a more natural state right there and so the last thing we're gonna do is show you how to set this drag on your reel and so this little dial at the top you spin this left or right and back to the left is loosening the, loosening the drag. Back to the right, tighten it up, okay? So you wanna have it to where you can hand pull it. If you can pull it like that, it is, it's pretty good. If definitely if you're fishing around some big, big fish, you don't wanna have it too hand tight to pull out because it'll put more stress on your line and give the fish a chance to break your line. The looser your drag is with, without it being too loose, is better for you as far as landing the fish that you're, you're trying to catch. So if you can pull a little smooth pull out like that, you got it set pretty good. You might have to tinker around with that as you're fishing to get a good feel for it and, and learn how to do it uh, perfectly, but that'll be something that you can get over time. And um, I really appreciate y'all stopping and watching this video. I love making videos. It's, it's a passion, man. I mean, I love fishing. And so the more I can do this, the happier I'll be. So as always, I appreciate y'all stopping by. Golly. It's hot out here. See you on the water next time.